Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Privacy Edition that was recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And before we jump on into the news, you can help support the channel if you want to head on over to switchedtolinux.com forward slash affiliates. And I'm going to stop talking like the Micro Machine Man. All right. Um, so anyway, head on over to the affiliates page. This always contains the most updated list of the affiliates. I have everything from the basic Amazon link. If you're looking for cell phone service, um, I'm recommending Mint Mobile right now, although I might look into some other services as well. Um, I have a grammar checker that is not Grammarly. Grammarly has that fun, exciting clause where literally anything and everything you type into your computer belongs to them. Um, I actually use one called Pro Writing Aid, which is a privacy-centric one. Uh, so there's actually a 20% coupon code off if you use my affiliate link there as well. There's some web hosting companies that I've used over the years, a couple VPNs, and some podcasting resources. So you can go ahead and uh, check those out if you want to help support the channel. Let's go ahead and dive on into the news, though. So if you guys remember this, um, I think I reported on some of this a little while after this was this occurred. So Ashley Madison is a, literally, it's a dating site to cheat on your spouse. So... I don't really have a whole lot of scruples as to what happens to these people. I mean, come on, guys. An entire dating site with a literal tagline, something to the effect. I think the tagline's posted in here. I forget. But it's literally a tagline that's like, you know, go cheat on your spouse or something. Quite literally. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, um, what happened is a long time back, this site was hacked and literally like everything was leaked out of it. All right. And then the hackers came up and said, hey, we've stolen all your information. And they're like, well, prove it. So they actually released two records, just two records with everything. Like, we got your whole database. Here's the two for proof. Ashley Madison never paid them and the stuff got leaked. Whoops. Um, caused a little bit of a big, uh, big deal because there were a lot of high profile people on this list which it was eventually squashed out a little bit, but it's coming back in the form of extortion scams. And so uh, this, uh, this week, um, a security company ended up getting a copy on what they believe is just a small batch process designed to test how the system works. So they're formulating a letter with just a boatload of personalized information about you with in the body of the letter is a pin number to unlock the PDF that is attached that does not get scanned by virus scanners because it is locked with a passcode. But the passcode is embedded into the email. If you open it up, it basically has this QR code. It has a whole long list of fun stuff that you've done. And I think they're even pulling in, I think that they're actually taking this data, cross-linking and referencing it with other information because they're also telling people purchase items that they actually made with the cards that they used, where they got it, when they got it, that was obviously not in the Ashley Madison database. So it makes me think somebody picked up the database and just spent a lot of time cross-referencing other data leaks. And people, this is why you need to stop putting stuff on the internet. Now, again, I've covered an entire series about this, that privacy is not just a one single point in time. Hey, they have everything anyway, so what's the difference? Privacy is a long going, ongoing thing. They were able to match all this stuff and put this in, I feel like Philip DeFranco. All right, um, but anyway, um, they are allowed to put all of this stuff and all of this information in here because extra data was leaked in other places, okay? And so that was definitely an interesting hack, so keep an eye out for that. So. And literally with what happened with this case, they very well, th this, this is potentially legitimate risk of stuff getting leaked rather than just the blanket sextortion stuff that we saw going on. Oh, we caught you on your computer with your web camera on stuff. It was going around for a while. Unfortunately, those have mostly stopped now. But this one actually has some air of legitimacy to it. So very interesting. And you guys who have uh, signed up for Ashley Madison to cheat on your spouse, you're getting what's coming to you now. Pay up. <laughs> Pay up. <laughs> All right. Well, the new Ring control panel. Ring is back in the news. The new Ring control panel uh, has been updated with some items. Now you can see if anybody has enabled two-factor authentication. So you can enable that in your account. 
You can now view and remove all devices and third-party services authorized to log into the account. So this is good. You can now remove uh, easily remove things. You can add and remove shared users on the account. And the last one is the more significant one here. You can opt out of receiving video request notifications from local police. Now, with the way that Ring works and all of the ways that they were rolling all this stuff out, it's probably, uh, my guess is the police are still getting the information. They're just using a little bit more discernment. Are they using the information outwardly because they have your permission or did some anonymous source tell them something? Yeah, it makes me always wonder when there's an anonymous source that leads to some arrest. You know what? Here in the court of the law, there should be no anonymous sources because I have the right to confront my accuser in court in here in the land of the USA. So the entire concept of anonymous sources really needs to uh, have a little bit more transparency in it on some level. On some level, I get some some need for a little bit of this, but I think it's an overused thing where they could very well have this information and say an anonymous source it's just you know they're coming out it was a ring camera and someone give it to us and this is why this is so good press release but if you don't give them permission they could still be getting it and just you know anonymous source told us i don't know what do you think is that a valid um thing that could potentially be happening let me know what you guys think of that one all right uh, the fractured future of browser privacy. Web browser privacy is kind of an important thing. And we've covered some of the articles about these more recently. Now, this particular article here is mostly a lead-in story for the next one. But it basically is saying that all we really only have two basic browsers left. We have Firefox and we have Chromium. And every other browser is pretty much built on top of one of those. There's a few little different offshoots as well, but they're handling privacy concerns completely different. Of course, Google with Chromium, they just want to get rid of all cookies anyway because Google has way better ways of tracking things that competitors won't have. So eh, we did a whole video on that once. Um, but with this, uh, Firefox is doing some more anti-fingerprinting stuff that, I don't know, I still think Firefox is your better browser, even though both of them have lost their ever-loving minds. But hey, what do we want? Um, it's, it's like, figuring what browser you want to use is like voting for a president. Which one's the, the least bad one to put in office? We don't know. You know, which is the least worst browser to put on my computer? I don't know, I'll go with this one, because the other one's definitely corrupted. You know, I mean... <laughs> We suspect this one is. We're not sure about the other guy. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, using your browser is like hiring, you know, electing a politician. You, you vote for whoever the least skeezer is because there is really no good choice. But anyway, they're all approaching privacy from different viewpoints, whether we're talking about, uh, you know, whether we're talking about the cookies or the fingerprinting or all these types of things. But are any browsers or any programs on your computer collecting your browsing history? That's an interesting question. Last week we talked about this Avast was selling all of the data. So Avast had these antivirus things on your computer that's just like completely, totally, and perpetually logging anything and everything on your computer because of the antivirus application needs access to everything and then collecting all that stuff and just selling it. And they're like, oh, we're not doing that anymore. Well. They're not deleting the data, they're archiving the data because of GDPR and the California Privacy Act because the laws do not have anything in there that allows a company to say, you know what, we, we done screwed up here, we're just gonna delete it all. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, the way these stupid laws are written, they're like, yeah, now that we've done this bad and collected all this stuff, the now the way the laws are written, we're literally not allowed to delete the data because they have to keep it on file because both of the GDPR and the California privacy laws specify that you have to keep a copy of what they have on file. So if somebody submits a request to ask, what do you have on file? You have to be able to give it to them. They don't have a provision that says we're just going to trash everything so that none of no you know no users have data here. They don't have that stipulation. So until a law is changed, which allows a company, Avast has to take this abusive thing and store all the data. Oh my lord, people! They have to store all the data. 
This is insane! Okay, we've been caught doing bad. We want to do away with it. We want to say we're coming clean. We want to get rid of it all. We can't delete the data because the law says we have to keep it on file. Let's put a provision in both these laws immediately, politicians, to allow them to delete all data perpetually. So, Here's the bottom line. Since both of these laws also have a, a ruling in there that says they have to delete information if you ask, you, if you've used Avast, need to reach out to Avast and request that they delete your data. Then it will be deleted. Otherwise, this is going to sit there stored archived on a server waiting for a hacker to gain access to it. Yeah, just ask Ashley Madison about that. All right, so Google Photos. Now, it was a toss-up for me which article was the number one. I think this is probably the bigger story this week. Um, so Google Photos in, uh, or videos inside of Google Photos were accidentally set to strangers uh, last November. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, so this is, of course, the thing where if you can basically select everything and say, we're going to export it, save me a copy of everything. Well, if you did that, you might actually have some stranger's photos in there. They might be nice photos. They might be not nice photos. They might be blackmail worthy. I don't know. But Google was just sending stuff out and they really only alerted a few handful of people that actually use the service in that period of time. But it's unclear if there's access outside of what's going on here. And so, you can download your data from a Google app as a backup or for use in another service. But there was a brief period of time, it was from November 21st to November 25th, 2019, that anybody who requested backups would also export videos, not photos, but videos into unrelated users' archives. So yeah, um, eh, hate to see what you get, you know. Uh, but anyway, in requesting a backup of your videos, but not pictures again, uh, might be visible to random users. Of course, what Google did, they basically just said, hey, we're going to keep it as quiet as possible. We're not really releasing any information. And that's kind of a bad thing. This is why people don't use this kind of stuff. Don't be storing all your stuff on somebody else's server in a situation where where they're un, uh, unencrypted on that service. So if it's a cloud server to store your photos, don't use it to store your photos. If it's just some generic backup, and legitimately you could use Dropbox for this, but you need to encrypt your data first on your computer, and then store the encrypted blob up in those servers. And even though I hate Dropbox, that's still gonna prevent Dropbox from seeing what's there. Now, if you take those photos and just put them in Dropbox, Dropbox can see what you have there. You don't wanna do that. You wanna encrypt everything locally and then store the archive up on those servers. I still personally don't like storing any of my personal data in cloud servers. I'll use a few cloud services here and there that I control like Nextcloud for the purpose of just things that need to be shared or easily accessible. So the best example is I'm, I'm always writing at least two books at any given time. As I'm working on my books, I have a copy of those books in the cloud server. And I do that every time I'm do it, finish a writing session, at least twice a week. So if I lose something, my primary computer goes down or I need to reference that work, I can grab it from any other computers through my cloud network. But once the book is done, all of the information about that book leaves the server because I don't want anything stored up there, even though I control that and it's encrypted. So that's the thing. Buy yourself some external hard drives. You don't have monthly fees. They're much bigger than what you can get. And you can store all of your things. Get yourself a couple of those and you can store a copy of your discs at your friend's house. Or what I do, I put them in a safe deposit box. So I always have off-site backups and on-site backups, but nothing is ever on someone else's servers. So, you know, that's that. And on to our feature story for today. Uh, there was a, a little snafu in the internet. And if you were on Windows 10 and you did a local search for local files, it stopped. It, it gave you a blank screen. People are like, what, 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 what's going on here? Well, there was a network outage for about three hours. Um, 
So it was about, was it three hours starting 8 a.m. Eastern time? And this was February 5th. What was that? That was Wednesday, I think. So anybody who attempted to use your desktop computer to search for a local file on desktop computer would error out because there was a problem with an internet connected service. So I could not go onto my Windows 10 computer do a local search for a local file. It took that local query and went out to the internet to do some internet-y things and then coming back. When are you guys gonna stop using Windows 10 unless for anything that you don't absolutely have to? I mean, really. Um, it confirmed and investigated the access and latency issues with multiple Microsoft 365 services. Microsoft blames a third-party networking fiber provider. Why is it connecting at all? Now, I guess that if you have the, this is just a guess, that if you do not have an internet connection turned on, it probably bypasses that. But if an internet connection is turned on and these third-party internet providers that who knows what in the world they're doing in the background goes out, then you won't get search results. People, this is the stuff that caused me to stop using Windows. I want my main OS to never go to the internet unless I tell it to go to the internet. This is insanely stupid that your services would go down because of some random third party internet connection goes down somewhere in Timbuktu when I'm searching in my local office on my local computer for a local file. For the love of God, people, stop using this stupid software. Stop. Just stop. I mean, really? So yeah, here's what it looks like. Um, hello world? <laughs> yeah, blank screens on your search. So, you know, of course it was fixed. Um, and so now, yay, we can access the search files, but it's still going out and doing internet-y things when you're searching for local files. Makes you wonder, what's it connecting to the internet for? I don't know, what do you guys think of this and the other stories? Let me know in the comments down below.